Let's take a look at our next script. It's Hello File Whittle. We have um, a number of things to build on what we've been learning. So first, if we look at the workflow in lines four through seven, we have variables declared that are also declared in the task. So these are workflow level variables. Look carefully at line nine. We're calling the task and we're assigning the workflow level variables, file input and memory and gigabytes to the task level variables. The task command on line 18, we are echoing the value of the file input variable and uh, we also have a memory in gigabytes. The output is as usual and in the runtime section I want to call attention to uh, line 25 where we're using Docker and we're assigning the memory value to the memory in gigabytes. Now when we run this it's going to be interesting to see how the execution environment affects how we set our variables. So in this case, we're looking at file and environmental variables using WDL and Cromwell. And we're running in run mode on our GCE VM. And we'll be looking at server mode on Terra. We'll be working with an inputs JSON file for both of these. And on the VM, we'll be looking at a local path and a remote path. So let's start with that. So here in the VM, you can see that I have the hello file, whittle file, the hello file, JSON file, and an input txt file. So let's cat the hello JSON file. And you can see that we've assigned the value of the variable file input to input text and the memory in gigabytes to five. So uh, we're going to go ahead and run this. And you can see that we're just calling Cromwell run using the hello file with the inputs hello file JSON, which is then assigning the file input to the input text file, which is just a text file for a demonstration. So you can see if we scroll up that the workflow succeeded and it echoed out the result. But something else I want to call out to you is this line. Key memory is not supported by this backend unsupported attributes will not be part of the job execution. What is that? That is our memory assignment. So it's important to understand that different parameters are assignable depending on the backend or the execution environment. Now one other aspect of working here I want to talk to you about is although we have just put all the files in the same directory, that really isn't typical. Um, you, even if you're working on a VM, you usually will put files in a separate directory so that you have your Widow files separate from Cromwell and LomTool, for example. Now, one of the things that I've purposely been doing is I haven't been focusing on um, putting in paths. So now we'll go back up to the top level directory. And rather than running our Cromwell command with the WDL files in this directory, what we'll do is, you'll notice the paths, run dot forward slash work slash hello file uh, and inputs the same thing. And it succeeded. So this is a small detail when you're working on your VM, but it is the best practice to have a separate uh, WDL directory and a separate data directory. So you'll be, you know, dealing with file paths. Now, when you're working with Terra, the concepts of where my files are quite different because, of course, it's a managed server cluster. So when you set up a workspace, you get a bucket on Google Cloud uh, that has folders in it that is uh, existing as long as that workspace is existing. So you can put files in that bucket and you can address them directly. Um, alternatively, you can put files in a Google bucket outside of the workspace. That way, if the workspace is deleted, those files still exist. Of course, it's extremely important to have appropriate security on whichever location you use. In addition, in this execution mode, environmental variables, in our case memory, are supported. So let's take a look at that. So the first thing that I want to point out to you is in the data section under files. I just clicked plus and then I uploaded the input text file 
and then I clicked on it to get the bucket address. And this bucket, you can see, has got a randomly generated ID. This is specific to this workspace. So um, I just kind of took the easy route for the first demonstration here. There's certainly other ways you can do this. So then in terms of the workflow, I added this as a workflow using the find a workflow button. And then here you can see the script, same script that we started with. And then the inputs I specified by clicking this button to specify the inputs being defined by file paths. We'll come to the data table later in this course. And I copied the GS value, that stands for Google Cloud Storage, for the bucket that was in this workspace. And then I put in 32 for the memory value. Then I saved it, and then I ran the analysis. Now, again, because this takes a minute, I went ahead and rent this already. And um, if you look at it, uh, it not only succeeded, which is great, but interestingly, if you look at the compute details and you go into the events, actually, you want to go into the pipeline, you can see under the pipeline environment, this back end will allow for memory configuration. So it's important to um, look at the Whittle documentation and use the configurable variables that you can work with for your back end. And they really do vary depending on which vendor cloud you're on, whether you're on HPC, whether you're on a local machine. So again, I'll put a link to um, that documentation from the Whittle docs in this video, setting up your variables to think about not only on which execution environment, but also whether you want to scope them to the task or to the workflow. And again, in subsequent videos, we'll look at chaining multiple tasks together, which helps you to determine at what scope to configure your variables. Once again, happy pipelining.